Welcome back, my Agrosis, to Ancient Greece Part 3. Last time we left off, the gods finally created humanity, reset it, and restarted it with the help of Deucalion and Pyrrha, and it's with that family that we begin. We all know the story already. Deucalion and Pyrrha landing from the Ark and having a shit ton of children, among them Helen, whose children were promised the lands of Hellas. But what you don't know is that the Ark that Deucalion and Pyrrha were on landed in Ukraine stranding them and Helen on the wide steppe of Central Asia, where Helen and his descendants came to be great horse riders, being the first in the world to tame the mighty beast, as well as inventing the wheel. Meanwhile in Greece, where the Ark was supposed to land, the gypsies lived. Well, they only lived on Crete and the surrounding area, but it was a crime against Hellanity that they were there in the first place. They're called the Minoans today, but we'll make a policy of calling them bullfuckers from now on. The bullfuckers spent most of their days lazing around in their oversized mud huts, making finger paintings like the babies there were, and of course, fucking bulls. Despite already fucking bulls, the bullfuckers also worshipped false goddesses, who has never blessed them, so not only are the bullfuckers bullfuckers, they're also simps. Never the bullfuckers weren't being idiots in their mud huts. They stole boats of nearby, more advanced descendants of Deucalion and Pyrrha, and marauded as far as Egypt in search of some bitches, but all returned empty-handed. Meanwhile, back in Ukraine, the descendants of Helen, now known as Yanmaya, decide that now was the time to claim their birthright. But not only that, as an act to honor the true gods, the Yanmaya, or Indo-Europeans, would conquer the whole world. Spreading out in all directions, they found that pretty much all cultures they came across in their path were just as degenerate as the bullfuckers. So, as an act of mercy, whenever they came across a Neolithic person's village, in their good sense, the Anmaya killed all the men and then bred with the women. The Anmaya were very humane in that way, choosing to cleanse the Neolithic peoples in a humane way. This conquest spread from the coast of the Atlantic to the Gulf of Bengal, and indeed, the lands of Hellas, promised to Helen all those years ago, was now in reach. When the Anmaya arrived, now known as the Mycenaeans, they did their usual routine, cleaning up the place from all the weed-sniffing, green-based dieting, false god-worshipping filth that came before them. But then they came across one of the bullfuckers, once again looking for some bitches to no avail. Disgusted by what they saw, the Mycenaeans immediately captured the bullfucker, having him show them where the rest were. Sailing across the Aegean, they arrived on Crete. Seeing the place in an unholy mess, they completely annihilated the bullfuckers, leaving no trace of them behind. None. None at all. It was at this time that the Mycenaeans met Minos, the strongest of the bullfuckers, who transcended the desire to get some bitches by instead reproducing all this bull instead, and what came out was a monster even worse than any titan or giant. The Minotaur was born. However, it spent most of its days, like father like son, hiding in the mud hut complex of Nossos, getting lost in there, and without any balls nearby to fuck, it stayed as the last of the bullfuckers, killing anyone who got in its path as a release of its gamer rage. Not aware of the Minotaur's existence, the Mycenaeans just killed Minos, and began to rebuild from the mess of the bullfucker civilization. With the bullfuckers gone, the Mycenaeans started their reign in Hellas by inventing real civilization, where chiefs became kings, cities were built, and order and good was maintained in society. Over time though, due to the impure breeding with the non yanmaya the pure-blooded Mycenaeans, for the good of Hellenic civilization, divided their kingdoms into strict hierarchies, as had become the trend across all of Yanmaya's successor civilizations, with the king at the top, followed by the pure-blooded Mycenaeans just below him, then there were the half-breeds, who were technically Mycenaean, but not enough to be considered true Mycenaeans. And then there were the remaining bullfuckers and other serfs and slaves, meant to work the farms, serve the pure-bloods, and serve as breeding cows when the population needs maintaining. During these developments, the king of Mycenae himself, Agamemnon, came to the objectively correct conclusion that Crete was just the beginning, the Mycenaeans had a moral obligation to cleanse the entire gene from the animals that inhabited it, and began the creation of a Mycenaean empire, spreading from Epirus to the Anatolian coast. It was a golden age for Hellenic culture. While the gods on Olympus were watching this, and completely unrelated to it all, they were holding a wedding between Peleus and Thetis, where all the gods were invited. 
All except Eris, who Zeus knew would try to fuck it up, so had Hermes stop her at the door of Zeus's palace. This was a well-founded fear, as Eris then broke through Hermes and threw into the middle of the wedding her secret weapon, the Apple of Discord, which hypnotized the goddesses Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite to desiring it at the expense of order and stability in the kingdom of the gods. To mediate the dispute, and the way to fight in the 60th civil war this week, Zeus left the matter to Paris, a prince of a Mycenaean colony called Troy, though, little known facts, Troy was basically the last remnants of the degenerates the Mycenaeans were trying to destroy. Not that Paris cared, he was living a noble and stoic life near Mount Ida, tending to his livestock, when one day, Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite approached him, asking for his judgement on the issue of the apple. Normally, he wouldn't give a shit about a stupid issue, let alone a woman issue, but then he heard Aphrodite off the hands of the most beautiful, pure-bloodied woman in the world. Paris, needing a new cum dumpster at the time, accepted, as if he ever needed superficial things like unlimited power or knowledge. Unbeknownst to Paris, the woman he was supposed to marry, Helen, no, not that one, had become proficient in the dark arts. As a true disciple of Pandora, her only objective in life was to manipulate and torture men. So she used said magic to trick her father, Tyndarius of Sparta, to have her marry Menelaus, some literal who who was trying to simp for the Spartan king. Learning of this, with the help of Aphrodite and Eros, and while Tyndarius was away pissing on one of the remaining bullfuckers in Crete, Paris snuck inside the Spartan palace and took Helen back to Troy, unbeknownst to him, and all of Hellas, this was a part of her plan. Learning of this, Menelaus, positively seething that he has been cucked, asked his brother, who happens to be Agamemnon, to destroy Troy and kill Paris. And so, now being fully tricked, he summoned all the great heroes of the Mycenaean Empire, and all coming with their armies, apart from Odysseus, who saw through Helen's shitty plan, and already living happily on his own, tried to stay out of the coming war. But remembering his obligation to King Agamemnon, he reluctantly joins the expedition. Agamemnon then set out to recruit the greatest of the Mycenaeans, who was prophesied to one day become the greatest of heroes. Achilles was sought out by Agamemnon. Yeah, so remember that whole wedding between Peleus and Thetis? Well, Achilles is the product of that. Indeed, the reason those two were married is because it was prophesied that the son of Thetis would grow to be more powerful than his father. So. Rather than taking Thetis for themselves, Zeus and Poseidon, in their good wisdom, had Peleus take Thetis instead, and thus Achilles was born. Achilles had it rough growing up, being constantly pressed to become a fucking femboy of all things by his mother, and one day he was told that he would be destined to either live a long but unfulfilling life, or a short but glorious one. Desiring the latter, but being held back by his overprotective mother, he was only let out after he was baptised in the river Styx, where he became immortal across his whole body, but, being a woman, Thetis botched the baptism and left Achilles' heel out of the water accidentally, making it his only weak spot. Achilles was then forced to disguise as a maid in the cause of Lycomedes of Skyros, until he was called upon to fulfil his destiny. Odysseus, learning of this, immediately set out to free Achilles from this humiliating state of affairs, teaming up with Phoenix, Achilles' former shooter, and some other peeps to recruit the young hero. Sounding a war horn outside of Skyros, immediately hearing the call to adventure, and not once he dresses a woman for a second more, Achilles left Skyros, and joins the Mycenaean cause. And so, the Hellenic worlds would now go to war. The Trojan War. First, the Mycenaeans wanted to recover Helen peacefully, not wanting to shed Mycenaean blood over a woman. But, under the orders of Helen, the order was rejected by a half bullfucker Trojan diplomat. The Mycenaeans then laid siege to Troy, but its walls were too thick, and the siege went on for nine fucking years by the gods. During the tenth year, some literal who Trojan priest called Chryses asked for his daughter back from Agamemnon, who has rightfully taken her as a war prize, another fine addition to his collection. But unbeknownst to Agamemnon, Chryses was very much favoured by Apollo who soon struck Agamemnon's army with plague, killing hundreds, and so, reluctantly, Agamemnon returned Chryses' daughter to him, 
with Achilles giving his own concubine to Agamemnon out of friendship, while Achilles took a break from all the fighting. The Trojans then began to press the Mycenaeans back, as without the help of Achilles, they were now outgunned, driving the Mycenaeans back to their ships and nearly burning their fleet. Oh, if only they knew. Patroclus, though, did know, and decided, with Achilles' permission, to disguise as him and took command of his army, pushing the Trojans back to their walls, while Hector, seeing the famous Achilles, drove towards him, hoping to fight someone who would finally be a match for him, fighting Patroclus and killing him. This incurred the wrath of Achilles, who slayed hundreds of Trojans with nothing but his bare hands, reaching Hector and challenging him to single combat. After a long duel, Hector realized that he couldn't win, and gave in to his fate, being killed by Achilles honorably, who returned his corpse to the king of Troy, Priam. Despite this crushing victory against the Trojans, Achilles was not long for this world, as he had achieved glory, but now must die. As Paris, also in the fighting, shot an arrow guided by Apollo himself, which struck Achilles in his heel, with Paris later being killed by Philoctetes, using a bow used by the Mycenaean hero Hercules, who's got worse and worse for both sides from here on out, as more and more heroes began to fall, one after the other. Helen must have been laughing in her palace as this was happening, but she didn't expect Odysseus, the only one to see through her plan to end Hellenic civilization, to employ a decisive strategy. Odysseus had the Mycenaean army construct a large wooden horse, disguised as a peace offering, but in reality held a Mycenaean strike force inside of its belly. With the Mycenaeans seemingly retreating and the war coming to an end, the Trojans led the horse in despite the warnings of their priest. The Mycenaean army then unleashed their wrath upon Troy, setting the city ablaze and plundering as much as they could. Indeed, the mistakes of the past now came to bear fruit, as the curse that was Minoan blood now took over the spirits of the Mycenaeans, fighting not for the gods of Olympus, but instead their false idols of which they can never hope to see favour. The fall of Troy is among one of the greatest tragedies of the world, and all orchestrated by the machinations of a single woman. Indeed, it wasn't a coincidence that the Minoan bloods took over the Mycenaean army, as Helen was no Mycenaean, but a Minoan seeking to take back her undeserved place as the evil goddess of Hellas. But unknown to her and everyone else, an even greater evil came from the pits of Hades itself, who was come to seek retribution. A horde of sea people who took advantage of the weakness on both sides, reigns terror across the world, destroying cities, killing kings, and laying waste to all that was civilized and good. Yes, this was divine retribution. For the old order of Mycenaean civilization, and the Bronze Age as a whole, would completely collapse. This begins with the Greek Dark Ages. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please be sure to subscribe. I want to make a part 3.5 of sorts to go over some of the parts of this period that I missed, such as the story of Hercules, so I'll do that next. Until then, see you later.